Hey there viewers. So some of you might recognize this car. This is my friend's car. Uh, I think last time I put tires on his car, a new battery, cabin filter, and I did his oil change because he was way overdue. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, service reminder and see where he's at. And I think he's also uh, He's also got a headlight out. Yeah, he's got a headlight out. I'll probably take a look at that and probably replace it. Uh, let's see, he's uh, he's only gotten about 3,000 kilometers since his last oil change. So it's not too bad. Uh, right now he's at 92,000 kilometers. And yeah, so I'm gonna be changing his oil. I'm gonna change his transmission fluid and I'm also gonna Put a new headlight bulb in there so yeah to change the transmission fluid on this car uh, i'm gonna have to take this air intake to access the fill plug that's underneath this all right once you remove all that uh the fill you can actually fill it from here or if you have a transfer pump or something you can you can fill it through the um the level check but it's just easy to get to this by just removing the intake uh, this is also your breather. Yeah, so let me take that out. And there you go. So this is a plastic plastic plug uh, and that's your filler. Just grab your funnel and stick it in there. Yep. So now you gotta remove the skid plate and get access to the drain plug. The drain So on these uh, skid plates, they have these little tabs that go into the holes. Uh, and the other side has a hook. So you can hook it on the back of there. So whenever you need to remove the skid plate, it just makes it easier to put it back if you're working on the ground. So these things just go into the, uh, the holes in the, the, you know, the rad support. They'll stay in place while you put your bolts in. And uh, what is that? That looks like a... Maybe rodents being in here. Yeah, anyways, that's the... Let's get played out. Alright, so... This is your drain plug. It's a 24 mil. And that is your level check. And to remove this, uh, you just need a 3 8 drive. Uh, you can sometimes you can turn it by hand. All right, just like that. Now it's got two little wings on it. You know. So yeah, uh, let's drain this thing.
So yeah, just the, uh, it's just last week. Uh, you know, after my day off, I come in, the first thing I get on my, uh, my bench uh, is an RO. Uh, we got another, they gave me a car that came from another dealership, but uh, it, it said it needed to replace a wastegate actuator or a turbo or something like that. Uh, apparently the other dealership said it, they didn't have the tools for it, but on those, uh, V6 twin turbos to access the turbo or do anything with the turbo, you got to drop the whole engine. So yeah, no information. They just told me it just came from another dealership. Um, you know, tell parts to call or t tell parts to order what it needs. Uh, and then I was like, Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm. To do a turbo or a wastegate actuator on this thing, you gotta remove the whole engine. So I ended up doing my own diag on it. And yeah, guess what? Didn't need it because just checking continuity in the uh, wastegate actuator saw or motor, it had good continuity. So it's not an open circuit there. Well, by the way, it, it had a check engine light for a, uh, what is it? P0045 turbocharger control solenoid open circuit I think that was the code and yeah so they told me okay just uh, do your own diag and then let me know what it needs so I did I did my checks my wiring checks I even checked uh, well for for one thing it has a open circuit right in the uh, controls the control side for the uh, wastegate actuator so uh, I, j I just, you know, check my resistance in the solenoid. There's, you know, good continuity, so there's no open circuit there. I checked. Uh, shop manual says on the power side on the wire should have two should have 2.6 volts, and I had 2.6 volts. And then on the negative side, it's supposed to have point, uh, 0.4 volts, which I did not have. So yeah, there was something wrong there, and. To confirm that, I, I, it's a twin turbo, so it, it should be the same on the other side, right? So I compared it to the other side with the ignition on, and it had its two four volts. So definitely, I'm missing uh, the ground side circuit, and it ended up being um, a poor pin fitment in the PCM. So I took the the bulkhead connector of the PCM, and it it was a uh, yeah. It was, a, it was just bad pin, pin fitment on that one wire that goes into the PCM. I put pressure on that little flap that goes into the uh, the, uh, the pin for the PCM and then put it all back together and I got my 0.4 volts back at the uh, at the connector for the the uh, wastegate actuator connector. So put it all back together, took it for a drive, check engine never came back on. Uh, yeah, it, it usually comes on uh, since it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, you know, after two, two key cycles, the first time it'll, it'll set a pending code, the second key cycle will put an active code and you'll get the light back on. So yeah, and then I told, told my manager, was like, yeah, it doesn't need a fucking turbo, turbo or a wastegate that this other dealership called for. And I had to talk to warranty and then warranty was like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I guarantee you it's fixed. It didn't need no parts required. <laughs> Pay me my diag time. So, yeah. And that was it. I, I know that this is probably not as exciting as what I do at work, but yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Would have been a great video for that, but anyways. Yeah, anyways, the, the fluid don't look too, too bad. I can still see some color in it. Also brings up that you know when when you when you work on a customer's car and one person diags it and you get another tech to put it in and it still doesn't fix it then then what right and especially if the customer is paying for it kind of kind of kind of just that customer is going to lose lose trust in you on your your or question your 
and that's why you want to you want to fix the you want to fix it right the first time and not have anything come back yeah that's just my little rant that had work it would have been it would have been a, a wicked youtube video if i could film at work too so anyways i'm just ranting fill up this tranny i think four and a half liters should be able to fill this uh, like i said I, I i've done a video on putting tranny fluid in it before i usually overfill it a bit and then i run the car get it to operating temperature then i pull that uh level check and let the the ex excess drain out of that level check and then that should be good Yeah, you don't need to watch me fill up all the bottles. So, cut right to when I run the car. Alright, so I got this car running. Uh, you can tell it's, it's cold. You can see like the you know, steam coming off the radiator. Because it is, it is raining outside. It's, it's pouring. But uh, I jacked up the rear end. I uh, just put it on the rear lower control arm so it's off the ground. That way I can get my level check once I pull up that plug. Just let that run out until uh, it comes out to a trickle. It, it, sh it shouldn't take more than just over four liters. So I usually dump five liters in there and then uh, let it drain out of the level check and then that should be it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how you uh, change the transmission, on, the transmission fluid on the uh, Hyundai Sonata or your Kia Optima. They're about the same car, same engine. So yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna do the oil change and change this headlight over here. Uh, and I'll see you next time.